So welcome to another project from me. Hi there. This is a PLL FM transmitter. What's a PLL FM transmitter? Well, if you build a FM transmitter and just build it with one or two transistors and a tank circuit wherewith you can align the coil and no crystal or PLL control, it probably will happen that the frequency of this device is changing. It's changing if the battery voltage changes, it's changing if the temperature changes, because of some of the components are affected by temperature. They are only having a really small amount of affection with the temperature, but actually it's enough to change the frequency. And there you go, therefore you use a so-called PLL FM transmitter. PLL means phase locked loop. And what the circuit does is, it controls the frequency from your transmitter and it compares it to a crystal I mean it's a crystal controlled oscillator which of course is very frequency stable and then it regulates the transmit frequency so you will stay always on the same frequency. In my case, my demonstration transmitter which obviously looks pretty messy but I was too lazy to make a proper circuit board, this is pretty much my prototype of my first PLL transmitter and since it worked I'd say okay let's make a video about this one, there's no need to make a newer one. I'm currently transmitting on 89.3 and I have not connected an antenna, so this transmitter is pretty weak. As you can see, I need to read, I need to lay the radio next to the transmitter to get a good reception. So as I said, no antenna connected, so everything is fine. I'll turn on the radio. I hope I won't get copyright issues with that song. Okay, I think as you could hear it does work. And here is the schematic. I'm mainly using standard parts, as you can see. And now I'll tell you what happens in a PLL transmitter. This is pretty much theory. So first we have our reference oscillator. The reference oscillator is made with the CD4060 integrated circuit. The circuit takes a frequency, for example in my case I'm using a 9.289 MHz crystal, and divides it very much. So you get a few kilohertz, a few kilohertz in the audible range, square wave signal coming out of this chip. So it divides it like a few thousand times or so and you could just get a few kilohertz, as I said, in the audible range on its output. The output then goes to the PLL circuit. Okay, let's say it like this. This is frequency 1. This is the reference frequency. Now what the circuit does, the CT4046, it compares two frequencies. It compares frequency 2, which is the actual frequency from the transmitter, with frequency 1. And what the circuit does is it tries to hold the frequency stable. There are some little bit more complex things going on, but I think that's the most simple explanation I could give you. So, where does frequency 2 come from? So here we have our reference, reference frequency, which is just a few kilohertz in the audible range. I mean, you can hear it if you connect a speaker there. It's a, say squeezing noise or something. And then we have frequency 2. Where from comes frequency 2? Well it's a little bit more complex as you can tell. All the circuitry there is just to generate frequency 2, the actual frequency. Usually you would have a chip like CD4060 just with a different code on it that you can put in directly the transmitter outputs signal and then it will provide frequency 2. But since these LCs are very hard to get and I wanted to make the transmitter with standard parts, I've used a little bit um, logical circuit. So, here we have the VCO, that means voltage control oscillator. You can adjust the frequency here and you want to adjust it close, of course, to the frequency you want to transmit. Here is a varicap, variable capacitor diode. If you apply a voltage on this varicap, it will change the capacitance. If you don't apply voltage, it will have a big capacitance, and the more voltage you apply, the smaller the capacitance gets. So since the varicap is connected to this uh, tank circuit, it will affect the frequency from this oscillator. So, I'll soon get to that how that works. Here we have a buffer amplifier for the RF output, so you can connect your uh, receiver or thingy there. Although I think the power would be a little bit too high, you need to make a uh, lower uh, power lowering circuit there if you want to connect it directly to a receiver. But buffer is required so it doesn't affect the oscillator too much. So here we have the FM radio signal. Okay. 
The FM radio signal goes from the VCO to the NE612 integrated mixer. So here we have our radio frequency where we are transmitting on, which is rounded up 98.3. Here we have another reference oscillator. In this case, in this case it's a 80 MHz TTL oscillator. I'm lowering the power from the output a little bit to not to overload the NE612. And what the NE612 does is it mixes our FM radio frequency with the 80 MHz from this TTL oscillator. And on its output we have the 9.289 MHz again, if this VCO is tuned to the right frequency. And if you see this frequency 9.289, you will also see this frequency of our crystal. See, we have, two different, we have two equal frequencies. We have the frequency from the crystal, which is always the same. And we have the varying frequency from this VCO and this mixer circuit. So now we have, if this, if this VCO is tuned to the frequency that we want to transmit, we have the 9.289 MHz, which go then into another CD4060 chip, which then does the same as this one. It divides the frequency. Here, as you can see, I've written divider there. And on the output from the divider, it goes up to the CT4060, and that is frequency 2. So, of course, it's due to uh, temperature effects, voltage uh, drifts, or something else, this VCO will change its frequency. That will also mean that this frequency from the divider, frequency 2, is not equal to this frequency. And now this chip here, the CT4046, compares both fre both frequency it compares frequency it compares frequency 2 with frequency 1 and if frequency 2 is not equal to frequency 1 it will do something there is the output and on the output you get a pwm square wave signal now let's see it like this if you get a good match there if you align the transmitter so that, that this chip does not have to do much you will get a like average square wave as you can see here in the middle if you, are, uh, if you are aligning this capacitor so that the oscillator is rather oscillating a little bit too high, it will make a rather, um, it will make a rather a short um, square wave, as you can see here. And if the oscillator here is oscillating a little bit too low, it will make a rather long uh, high-level signal. So the high-level signal, or the varying PWM signal, uh, which is a push-pull output as far as I can tell, now goes to the so-called loop filter. This is just a very, very basic loop filter containing one resistor and one capacitor. And what the resistor and the capacitor does is the capacitor filters this uh, square wave signal and makes, this is just an example, makes a, a DC voltage out of it, a variable DC voltage. This DC voltage is controlled by this CD4046 chip. The DC voltage now goes over a RFC resistor, so this resistor is just there to prevent some RF from the oscillator going back into the circuit and make it more stable. This RFC trans uh, resistor then goes to the worry cap. And as I've told you, if you uh, are applying a varying, varying voltage on this worry cap, you will get an affection of this frequency. And that's pretty much how this regulation system works. So this chip compares the first frequency with the second frequency. The second frequency is more or less generated by this VCO and the uh, divider circuit that divides the FM frequency down to the crystal frequency. If there are frequency differences, it will change the pulse width on its output, which will cause a varying voltage there, which then will cause this uh, circuit to be tuned always to the frequency you want. And since I was lazy, I'm modulating this worry cap here. So as you can see, here is the audio input. You can apply some music to the circuit and you will see it works. So these are the basics how a PLL FM transmitter works. Of course, to this technology, uh, chips and transmitters have become more complex and more better. Most you can buy like a SMD case, uh, is, I see like the BA, a B, BH1415. So the BH1415, but the problem with this is that you need a microcontroller and a program to actually tell this IC what it needs to do. There are also some other ICs like the LM7000 that also use a PLL circuit and they're just like one IC and you can connect as far as I know. You can connect your local oscillator directly to the chip. So you only got one IC and your VCO stuff, not all this complex stuff, 
but therefore you always need a microcontroller and a program that tells the chip what to do. Okay, so now let's demonstrate that. I'll now show you how it works or that it works. So uh, here is the actual circuit as you can see here is the first reference crystal which is the 9.289 and here is the 80 megahertz crystal oscillator, here is the mixer and so far and so on. And now I have my voltage meter connected to the loop filter on the capacitor. So it's connected with plus, it's connected here, with minus, it's connected there. So this is the connection. And now I have my variable capacitor here. And now watch. I'll tune the variable capacitor to more capacitance. More capacitance will mean that the frequency from the VCO goes down. And therefore, the chip will have to make longer spikes or longer high levels to get more voltage here. More voltage means this worry cap has less capacitance and it tunes the circuit back to the frequency we want. And I'll show you that. I'll now tune the capacitor to bigger uh, to bigger capacitance and as you can see, um, as you can see now, now it's locked. Now we are having 5 volts and as you can see we are transmitting. Okay, as you could see it's working. And now I'll tune the capacitor to, ma to more capacitance, that will mean that the voltage is going to increase. And as you can see, the voltage is increasing. Now I'll tune the capacitor to lower capacitance. That means that the worry cap here, this diode, as you can see here, so this diode, will need more capacitance to hold the VCO on the frequency if this capacitance is getting lower. That means that this chip is making shorter pulses. Shorter pulses will mean that, there we, that here we, that we are having less voltage here, less voltage here will mean this worry cap has more capacitance. So I'll now turn it in the opposite direction and you will see the voltage on the voltage meter is going to drop. As you can see, I can't do it too much because if you are doing it too much, if you are tuning too much, the PLL will unlock. It means even if the PLL is varying the voltage, it doesn't have enough space, if you want to call it like that, to keep the oscillator in place. I'll show you that. And you will also notice this typical PLL sound. So there's one thing, since I'm using a very cheap input filter, I'm sure you can hear this, I'm sure you can hear it. That's the frequency that we have here. And this frequency usually is being filtered out by this loop filter, but as I said, I'm using just a very cheap loop filter, and that's why you can still hear this noise. So now I'll demonstrate you, eventually you will hear it. So, so now the PLL is not really locked. It tries to lock, it tries to lock, but it can't lock. It's always, it's locked, it's unlocked, it's locked, it's unlocked, now it's not locked. It's always trying to hold the frequency, but it can't hold the frequency, then it's unlocked, then it tries to hold the frequency, so now I'm going into locked mode again. So now it's locked. So it's holding the frequency absolutely stable, you can run this thing for hours and the frequency will always stay on this frequency. Okay, now I can turn on the music again. So this is basics of how does a PLL FM transmitter work. Best regards, Stefan.